Welcome back. The community distro OpenSUSE Leap 15.5 is out on schedule. Why OpenSUSE Leap 15.5 is interesting and why there are little surprise comes with it, you will get in this video. My name is Michael and I started with SUSE Linux 8.1 in 2003. So I have a long history with SUSE and now let's get started. Many of you probably got your first taste of Linux with Ubuntu. Sure, in the late 2000s you could hardly get past Ubuntu. But OpenSUSE also survived the storm of enthusiasm. It also survived numerous changes in ownership as well as its packaged additions. What used to be SUSE Linux no longer exists as enterprise and home users have been separated. Business users are placed with SUSE Linux Enterprise SLE and home users are served by OpenSUSE. There are now several editions of OpenSUSE. In this rough overview, we will limit ourselves to two concepts, rolling release and point release. Rolling means rolling. This means OpenSUSE tumbleweed where there is always the latest of the new. Here at Leap, there is the claim for maximum stability and good package integration. The package base here is SUSE Linux Enterprise SLE. What's new? Linux kernel 5.14 with backports for better hardware support, KDE Plasma 5.27 LTS, XFCE 4.18 desktop environment, MATE 1.26, LXQT 1.2.5. Let's check the specs. The minimum requirements are 2 GHz dual core processor or better, 2 GB physical RAM plus additional memory for your workload, more than 15 GB free of hard disk space, either a DVD drive or a USB port for the installation media, internet access is helpful and required for the network installer. OpenSUSE Leap is the static release branch. As with previous releases, OpenSUSE Leap is supported on many architectures. Here's the list. Virtual machine images are also available for download for those who wish to virtualize OpenSUSE Leap. Package management is provided via Zipper. Alternatively, there is DNF and a graphical desktop solution such as Discover for KDE or GNOME Software Center for GNOME is also in place. The native package format is traditionally RPM. On top of that, you can also install apps as Flatpak containers. If you want to get started with OpenSUSE, this is not a bad idea. It starts with downloading the ISO image. To do this, open a browser and then go to the OpenSUSE page on OpenSUSE.org and click here at Leap on Install Leap. Now here on the right at Download and now you can select the imagery architecture. I assume most of you have traditional computers. In that case, just click here either offline image or network image. The name should be self-explanatory. With offline image, the loading process takes longer and the installation is probably faster. With live image, it is the other way around. If in doubt, use the offline image. After the ISO file is downloaded, you should validate it and create the checksum. I already showed how to do this in the video in the description. Just have a look in case of any questions. The installation of OpenSUSE has not changed much in the last 20 years. The installer is not old fashioned, it is tried and tested and has been modernized again and again. So don't worry. Just some notes. Start from the image and then just follow the steps on the wizard. It is not hard. It is well tested and should lead you to your installed system. We'll jump straight into the test now. Let's come to the hacks and important commands. Update system, sudo super up. Refresh flatpak, sudo flatpak update. The fully automated chain looks like this. sudo super up minus y ampersand ampersand sudo flatpak update minus y. But you have also the chance to do it via App Center. In this case, KDE Discover, open it and then click here, fetching updates. And in case of any update is available, there is a button, install all. That's it. The target audience of OpenSUSE Leap consists of users who need a stable and reliable system. 
The fact that you don't always get the very latest package can be tolerated. In return, you participate in the expertise and stability of SUSE Linux Enterprise and this is exactly where the distro claims manifest itself. Maximum stability with long-term maintenance. However, lib15.5 clearly shows that not all desktops are equal considered in the update. KDE users can access without any hesitation, while GNOME or Cinnamon users should perhaps look for another solution. Now let's come to the performance report. My system occupied just under 6GB of the disk. The memory requirement was 1.5GB. There were 2316 packages installed on my system after a start. It is worth mentioning that I had deselected games during the installation process. At the time of creating this video, KDE Plasma version 5.27.4 was provided. This means that we are running on a fresh LTS branch of KDE Plasma. By default, the graphics platform is X11 instead of Wayland. If you want to switch to Wayland, you have to log off from your system and then switch from X11 to Wayland in the login manager. The reason for this is that there are still minor inconsistencies with KDE on Wayland. This should be addressed in the next major KDE version. KDE Plasma is about to undergo a generation change. With Plasma 6, the desktop will run in Wayland mode by default. Currently, no exact plans for this release of KDE Plasma 6 are known. However, it is known that KDE Plasma 5.27 LTS will be maintained until the release of Plasma 6. The former promise to offer a stable SLE base with new desktops is not fully kept. KDE has been refreshed as well as XFCE, but GNOME 41.8 or Cinnamon 4.6.7 as well as Budgie Desktop 10.6 are anything but the new generations of these desktops. Oh, by the way, the desktop concept is tried and tested. If you have used Windows once in your life and like this concept, KDE Plasma will seem familiar to you. The Windows 10 concept is the standard for KDE. The customizations are extensive and, and it's very easy to customize your system. Just go to System Settings, Appearance. Here you see the pre-selection, Open SUSE, beyond that, Breeze Twilight, Breeze Dark and just Standard Breeze. If you want to have new themes, just go here, Get New Global Themes. And then you can choose whatever you want. In this case, if you wanted the Apple Sonoma light theme, then just click here on install. Maybe you have to apply the theme one more time, but that's it. Now let's come to the pre-installed software. We have Linux kernel 5.14 as browser, there's Firefox, as email client, there's Kmail, as office package, there's LibreOffice, as software container, there's Flatpak. Now let's come to the general pre-installed software. Like I said, I deselected the games during the installation. As a result, the software stack comes with some KDE in-house apps, but overall it's fine for me. For the desktop, it's okay. Just have a look. Development, Kate, Education, LibreOffice Math, Graphics, Internet, Multimedia, Office, Settings, System, Utilities, that's it. Yast is still part of Leap, but that could change in future should the Immutable Editions prevail in the house of OpenSUSE. In my test of OpenSUSE Micro OS, for example, there was no trace of Yast anymore. After all, Yast digs deep into the system and that is exactly what they want to prevent with the immutable systems. Yast has always been a SUSE tool that offers many system admin tasks graphically. But visually, Yast no longer looks quite so modern and much of the functionality is nowadays offered by the GNOME Software Center or KDE system settings or the general settings of the respective desktop. As a result, Yast is becoming less and less important, even though it is still technically a first-class tool. Originally, we assumed that OpenSUSE Leap 15.5 would be the end of road. 
but there is a new situation. The OpenSUSE developers would like to release one more Leap 15.6 version before presumably moving towards to ALP base. As things stand, Leap 15.6 is scheduled for release in June 2024. For the Leap branch, this means that it will continue for the time being. In general, the SLAS 15 base will receive support until July 2031. This does not mean that Leap will also be supported, but it could mean that Leap 15.6 will be supported for longer or that Leap 15.7 could be somehow released. But at the moment, this is just some kind of my rumors. I notice clearly that OpenSUSE is definitely a KDE distro. That means with KDE Desktop, the distro is the most fun. KDE Plasma is also well integrated and maintained. With GNOME version 41.8 and Leap 15.5, things unfortunately look rather bad. But KDE users were and are in good hands with OpenSUSE. Don't be so bothered by the supposedly old 5.15 kernel. With OpenSUSE Leap or SLAS, the kernel is supplied with backports. This means that what is inside is not quite what is written on it. It is a 5.15 kernel, but it has received patches from newer kernels. This should also provide newer computers with fresh drivers as well as corrections and improvements. Well, let's come to the conclusion. As a KDE and LTS user, you can't go wrong with the Leap 15.5. The desktop is well integrated, the system is extremely robust and stable and maintenance will continue until the end of 2025. As of June 2023, that's just under two and a half years. Presumably, some of you will then no longer be using the computer which you are currently using. What I mean by this is, on the one hand, it's a great and stable distro. On the other hand, it is more or less certain that the future of Leap is uncertain. Leap is based on SLES, SLE and SLD and SLE will be replaced by ALP, Adaptable Linux Platform. Leap could be replaced by Leap Micro. The different editions on OpenSUSE are currently in flux and it seems they have to find each other. If you are currently using OpenSUSE Leap 15.4, you can upgrade to Leap 15.5 in the next few weeks. Then you will get refresh packages and depending on the desktop, it will also be modernized again. But if you are now using another operating system or distro and are considering OpenSUSE Leap, you should know what you are getting into. In about two and a half years, you will probably have to switch to something else, be it another distro or another OpenSUSE edition. You should know that beforehand. For me, who prefers GNOME, this is not a big deal as GNOME remained unchanged at version 41.8. This is disappointing and, in my eyes, no longer fulfills the promise once made with Leap, a stable LTS base with new desktops. But okay, maybe it's limited developer resources so that the GNOME base remains at SLED level or maybe it's corresponding focus so that GNOME fell behind. For GNOME users, there are better alternatives. Tumbleweed would be the in-house one at this point. What do you think about OpenSUSE Leap 15.5? Would that be something for you? Or do you wave it off? Feel free to write your opinion in the comments. SUSE, or today OpenSUSE, used to be the distro in Germany and German-speaking area in Europe. That's why some of you might have gone some way with SUSE in the past. Or what do you say? If you like watching Linux videos, then you should subscribe to my channel for free. Feel free to give a thumbs up and activate the bell, then you'll be taken care in the future. Thanks for the kind attention. We'll see you in the next video if you want. See you soon ladies and gentlemen. Peace.